Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Raytin is our opponent in our Inside My Head. Uh, a very high level opponent too. And uh, I've decided to play openings on uh, Inside My Head now that I don't usually play. <coughs> Mostly for the sole reason that I don't want to overload the um, channel with my own repertoire. And so I would like to offer you a little bit of a wider range of openings um, so that we can have some funsies. Now, this early CD5 is not meant to be good at all because my bishop can get out. Mind you, the position and the whole structure is extremely static. And um, yeah, this is the cards part where our opponent is going to play for a uh, attack on this thingy magic ball. What do you call this again? A uh, minority attack, right? So g6 was played in order to be playing bishop uh, f5, which now would be very awkwardly met by queen b3 when I am a bit loose here as well as here. So I could go bishop g7. Or bishop e7 even. I don't know which one is better to be honest. But somehow it doesn't feel intuitively right to put it here. Even though they do do that. In the uh, Queen's Gambit declined a fair bit. So now I feel justified in playing bishop f5. Bishop d3 is going to come. I take take. Um, we castle. I'm going to play knight here. Here, pray that he doesn't play knight e5 f4. Oh, maybe that's actually not that good because knight e5 queen c7 f4. Maybe I have some knight remove f. Yeah, knight. Yeah, something like knight remove f6, and then this knight has to go. I don't know. Note that the other stock standard plan here is knight a6, knight c7, knight e6, which probably could have would have been better. Okay, I'm going to ask this bishop once, but probably again I'm betraying very limited knowledge and experience on the black side of this setup. So after bishop here I will go rook e8 with the idea of g5, bishop g3, knight e4. Followed by f5 and it looks like I'm doing something on the king side which makes me happy enough because once again we're talking about an opening I've got no clue about whatsoever. Now, if I take this with the queen, then after b4 I can try to be a pest here. Which is another typical motif. And I'm going to go for that. So. I do have a tiny, 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 whiny knowledge of uh, the structure, and we are going to bank on that. So now with b5, then I, uh, sorry, b4, then I have got b5, and then put my knight in there, which is what he's trying to prevent now by putting his knight in here. I don't like this kid. Should I play for b6, c5 here? Problem with b6 is that he doubles up on the c and very easily denies c5 and in fact builds up a fair bit of pressure on me. And I just, well, I do have time to come here. Knight c5, knight takes, rook takes, bishop f8, rook back, and then bishop d6. Yeah, that's what we'll do. That's what we will do. Okay. Rook c2, really dude? That looks very weird because now you can no longer come in without having to take with the pawn, which again, I don't think is that great. And I can clamp down on that b4 business having put the bishop here. So now bishop d6, and I'm going to begin my kingside agenda, something like that. Not quite, because that looks a little bit cray cray. But for the time being, I feel like we are holding the position quite well. So if I was played to hold b4, b5, of course. 
Now I'm not quite sure what his right plan is, to be honest. He can do this, but that would mean that after knight d2, he would have abandoned the entirety of the king's side, and it gives rise to my pieces flooding in. A typical thing and theme of the Karlsbad. Now again, naturally, I would take this with this dude here, keeping the bishop on the board. But pawn takes, sorry, bishop takes, pawn takes is also a valid idea. Because if then he plays knight d4, I can always come into e5, potentially c4. So I'm actually not quite sure which piece I should aim to keep and which one to get rid of with. Hmm. Actually, after take take, I could also play a4. Then again, he has still b4, take take, and then b7 is a bit soft, but so is a3. Yeah, I like the knight, quite ironically. And I'm thinking rook e4 or a4 here. Yeah, I actually like a4. I think this is looking good to clamp down on these. So this is one move, one pawn stopping two is always desired and the pawns can't progress on forward naturally. So this is looking like uh, we're playing chess. And once again, never in my life did I play um, Queen's Gambit declined as black, which is not to say that I don't know which way the chess pieces are going on the board, but it is to say that I've got extremely limited experience with this whole shebang. Now, I did expect this, but I didn't think it was good. I mean, I don't even have to take the bugger, but if I don't, he'll certainly push by, which will essentially make this move utterly meaningless. So we will have to take in order to justify our point. Now, however, I can choose to pile up on two different pawns. I could play rook here and then pile up here, or I can play rook here and then pile up here. Does it even hang? So if I get cute with move, yeah, no, 94. Okay, so I can't trap this queen in here. For all I can see. Okay, let's go here. I'll come around here and then we'll take it from there. It's a bit awkward that it's the front rook that defends the pawn because it limits the scope of my rooks. So ideally I would like to come here. However stupid it sounds, so that the front rook still has scope for moving around as opposed to neither rook can move. Am I even threatening to take this now, queen takes? Probably not. But uh, my next move would be to attack this as well, and then there's a fair bit of stuff for him to defend. I thought. Also, instead of coming from here, I could now come back, come in, come in here, which would hit here quite badly. So let's go back here for the time being. I'm threatening to take that, expecting queen b4. Actually, no, queen before no longer works because after take queen, take rook b8 wins the rock. Which means that I could have actually bugger. I could have taken this. Oh, shivers. But he just blundered the same thing again. Alright, so rook here, queen here, rook here. How is that not winning? Oh boy, this is terrible chess. What am I missing? This is... Yeah, that was awful. Like we just missed uh, rook a3 winning on the spot twice in a row. GG, on your bike. Yeah, this should be fairly straightforward death, actually.
Yeah, this this shouldn't be holdable. Uh, I mean, he potentially can have a monster knight on d4. The reason why knight d4 doesn't work is because I have check check picking off the rook. So um, I'm expecting. Yeah, it, it's tricky. Probably the rook needs to go, or he needed to defend the back rank. But now he fell for this, right? Does this work, ladies? Check, 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 check. Oh boy, this was ugly. Woo! Baby, bring it on. The Queen's Gambit decline. The rules the house still. And the dab. Yeah, per I would have probably played here as white, removal of this rook somewhere. Maybe all the way home if need be. And then put the knight on d4, hoping for a very sturdy setup. And in fact, rook b1 would have allowed him to re respond to rook a5 with rook c1, where I find it very difficult to find a target because I've got two pieces to attack with, he has got three to defend with. I actually have to reevaluate this. I think after rook here, I would have had a bit of a hard time to win this. Which doesn't seem to be the case anymore. Because knight d4 is still meant by the check. I'm just trying to see if there is a better move than rook e6. Which I really would like to have to find one. But I think that's going to just cut it fine. Although it looks passive as heck. So... One side of me doesn't like it at all. One part of me is what I was trying to say. That was an annoying move to deal with. So rook d 4 now loses to check. Rook takes, queen takes, check, king, key, queen, check, back to e5, picking off d4. Hence king f1. But again, this is a move that exposes the king. I don't like it. For him, that is. Um, I really want to now find white squares for my queen. So queen f6, queen f5 looks a bit slow, but queen f6 does deny knight d4. Matter of fact, threatens d4. So I quite like this. And if he plays rook d1, then probably queen c3 coming in, hitting this. Yeah, I feel like I'm being annoying. And usually being annoying uh, is a beautiful trait in chess and a very frustrating thing from your opponent's point of view. I have to say that here is playing very much to my hand if uh, what I'm thinking is correct. Because I don't think this was good either. Because right now in this position I can't penetrate because both of these squares are covered by respectively with the rocks. And so I would have needed to play another move, whereas now he's forcing me to play forward looking, forward going moves, knight c6, queen c5, loses a piece. Either I'm totally wrong or he's actually going to resign here. Because I don't see a move here now for white anymore. Takes, loses a piece, if he goes back home I just pick it off, worse comes to worse, maybe there is even better stuff there, I don't know. But picking off this pawn with a tempo, creating two connected pass pawns is just deadly. Yeah, this is resignable now. Uh, last two moves were very poorly played by him. Uh, rook c1 was uh, rook c to d1 was a, a beginning of a terrible plan, uh, if logical. Oh, it doesn't lose a piece because of rook here, right? That's fair. Position is dead lost nonetheless, but uh, at least he has got something. I don't see anything wrong with d4. Yeah, let's go. d4, d3, rook in mate. That's the plan. Uh, knight can't go, can't go, can't go, can't go. The rook can't move because the knight drops. So, um, yeah, essentially... Oh, I missed this. Was that a win on the previous move? Oopsie daisies. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but I could have... Yeah, I could have done it a move earlier. Oh, bugger! He doesn't want a rematch! Ha! 
Okay, we'll have to do some analysis then, ladies. Um, geez, I'm happy with this. I mean, okay, I'm outrating the guy by 100 and he's not titled and uh, we don't even know who he is. But uh, he was a solid player and I played a, a total random opening out of the blue. Okay, so let's see. Bishop d6 is theoretical here, apparently. Okay, that's that's interesting. Whoa, baby! Only inaccuracies on my end, apparently. Although surely I did blunder in the end because I didn't play rook uh, e6 one move earlier. Anyhow, so bishop d6 is the way to go and then just appreciate the fact that our bishop is on... Nah, that can't be right. Oh, not 97 castles. What's the difference, though? Rook e8 and if bishop d3... Ah, oh, because now I, oh, of course, I get to develop the bishop. All right, ignore me. So g6 was unnecessary. But still fully sound. And I knew bishop e7 was a move here. I knew that, and I still didn't play it. Okay, bishop b5, we're following a logical path. Knight d7, rook c1. First weird move, really, because this was not part of the usual... Uh, minority shebang and yeah it was a little bit purposeless as far as I can tell uh, but okay h6 takes was strange I took with the queen computer reckons knight takes is better I didn't like this because it allowed this and the computer says b4 a6 a4 exactly what I would have done for white here queen e7 why is b5 not good here Okay, because apparently take take this is for a human is rather unclear why this is so great for black because now we are fighting uh, against an isolated pawn. But okay, maybe so rook b1 and white is a touch better, and this is exactly what I didn't want to have, which is why I took with the queen, which apparently is still met by b4. So don't I have this here? Yeah, I do. Having said that, after a4. The computer wants the absolutely mental a5, a move I've never seen in my life in this position. a6 is the usual method. But here, a5 is quite a unique move to deny this. Having said that, it does it at the expense of weakening this. So even this structure is interesting, but a little bit ugly from Black's point of view. Knight a4, I think, was weird. Apparently I should have played a5 against it, I don't understand why. So I'm not going to comment now on all moves because it just appears to be weird computer talk. Black is slightly better. And bishop takes was right, baby! Because I thought that knight takes, pawn takes bishop here, keeps a bishop in an okay spot, but somehow I felt my bishop wasn't playing. But maybe this evaluation is also wrong. The computer actually prefers black slightly. Okay, a4 was good. Tuck, tuck. Look, eb8. Okay. Slight inaccuracy by me. Rook a5. Yeah, of course, rook a5, because this is what I didn't realize that after rook b1, this has stopped being a threat. And so when he went here, I could have just taken. Oh boy, that was so noobish. Um, instead I went home like a fool. And now I just went for it. And my only question about this position is the winning plan for black after rook b1, which I did say was best. And the computer actually approves of it. Rook a4. So I'm guessing the idea is knight d4, rook c4. Correct. Knight takes, queen takes. Yeah, so if I get to have a pass pawn, win a win a chicken dinner. That should be a win. Which is why the computer wants to come here. And at this point, I'm s okay. A bit doubtful. F4 just on time. Knight takes e6. Queen e8 hitting he here. That is just beautiful chess. I wish I could be half as smart as Stockfish. This would have been hard. Here the opponent lost the plot completely, fell for this. 
Oh my god. You guys must be laughing your backsides off for the last 10 minutes. I missed this. <laughs> Whoa. Lame. Okay. Terrible chess. And yeah, from here on, I missed here rookie 6, but d4 is the same story because d3 rookie 2 is so strong he can't undo this. Not that it's an excuse. And the winner win a chicken dinner. Wow! Just when I thought that I produced a really good game from an opening I never play, I just miss a kindergarten level tactics. What's the moral, folks? Is there a moral for that? I don't know. Apparently, I'm looking at the assessment of the computer. It did not count as a blunder that I didn't take a 3 here. I wonder how. Like, virtually this move, rook f3 versus the text, is 5 points stronger from uh, the materialistic evaluation point of view. Like, how is that not a blunder when you don't take that? I'm ashamed. Well, 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 let's put this embarrassment on YouTube for you guys to enjoy that. Uh, you know, we are chess coaches are also mere mortals and uh, we also tend to fall victims of occasional blunders. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it was still a sweet win. Um, and yeah, I will try to be back with more very soon. Ah, shout out to the one and only definitely not Philip. Def not Philip. Uh, I'm sure you guys know his name from uh, Twitch and uh, basically every possible chess forum where I am present. He has done a tremendous amount of work uh, on uh, the channel's layout. And as you can see, I'm trying to dedicate more time to it now with more frequent uploads and whatnot. Uh, so once again, shout out to the guy who is deaf, not Philip because he has done a fabulous job to revamp the channel and uh, make the thumbnails and all the visuals and audios and whatnot a heck of a lot better. So you rock, dude. And on that note, I will let you guys go. Hope to catch you soon.